Hi, and welcome to Dedication. Fans remember the Bay City Rollers. Thank you for joining us for part three of our podcast with Diane and Jan. Last week, we left you with quite the cliffhanger. Did Diane really say that Tam tried to kill her? Let's get to the rest of that story and more with Diane and Jan. Take it away, girls. Pebble Street, obviously I see Tam in the early 70s with the rollers when he used to come on stage with her or he'd be in a car with her and then you'd lucky, I mean I was lucky that I got to get him to sign my album in 1974 because you weren't allowed near him, you know, it was hard to get to but in, when he came, he's come up Pebble Street Tam with um, some of the boys that he was with, like that girl from Magnus and some others. And my friend and a mini, who was, was in with Wayne one day, Eric and a few of the others was in there, and Tam come out and he said to us, No, oh, you've got fullness, no. So he said, Nothing in your car would want to follow. Well, that was a big mistake. Because he got out of his car and he tried to pick my friend's car up with us in it. <laughs> and he was calling us some choice words. And my friend opened the window, he's chopping his arm in. Oh my god, he's going to kill us. He's he was jumping up and down about three minutes swearing at us then he stopped he painted the car on the bonnet and he got in his car and drove off what was his problem just that you were there uh, well no he, he thought we was a load of he, he, he didn't like with it you know, he called us round around slags huh. he called us he um wow. yeah he was um yeah he he uh, he was um nuts he was no. Mm, well that, that's definitely the that's definitely the consensus with everyone that he was absolutely yeah. nuts. He was nuts. He was nuts. He one minute he'd be fine, and then he would just he would just flip. He would just flip. He, he was definitely a control freak, a megalomaniac and control freak. And when we said to him, oh, "There's nothing in your car we want to follow," he went berserk, absolutely berserk. Oh, wow. mm. um, we tried to pick the car up with four of us in it. So I'm just looking at him. I'm thinking, my God. But, wow. That's frightening. You know, and uh, I, I like the one Jake. Uh, I was, like, in, 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 in the, when the roller started in 1975, he was talking, wasn't he, about him and Ted. Yep. And all the stuff. In 1974, when they started, there was Jake, Ted, and a young boy called Martin Donald. They used Edwin Shirley trucking. And they done all, they done all the stuff themselves. And after a couple of the gigs, we used to go back back behind to, to talk to Marty, and then we used to say, "Oh, come here, that rose, come here, that, come here, come that, come here, that, come here, that all off the floor." And and look like over the years when he came back in the seventies with the role, he was his last bloke. Oh, we love him. Bloke. Absolutely loved him. Yeah, he was lovely to talk yeah. to. Did you remember him from when come out? Did he come to the states? He did he come. He, he did come. I mean, I think the West Coast girls had more interaction with him. Um, I, I remember just like probably seeing him in, in the magazines and things as, you know, throwing people off stage or things like that. But no interaction at all. I remember his wife as well, Stella. She was lovely. Yeah, he speaks very fondly of her. Yeah, Jake was, Jake was good, but he wouldn't tell you anything. He, he wouldn't. He wouldn't tell you anything. He was a bit... He weren't as good as me drivers. Well, he was doing his job. He wouldn't give us no info, no. Well... We we didn't bother with him. We knew he was a dead loss. (laughs) He was doing his job. He was doing his job. Yes, he was. He gets definitely high marks for that. Um, yes. You know, it's interesting how, you know, we've done about, about 14 or 13 of these so far, and there's a thread through all of them that, that the stories all connect. It's it's really kind of magical. But if, uh, if I could remember everything, but things just come and go, but I don't know what it's like. I just laugh. It's just, it was just a, a laugh. You know, like... You'd see them and you'd be able to, you'd think, oh, I can touch them. And, but I was too that far away that you couldn't touch them. There was, was so near, but so far. But then once they got, once they got to Hedden Street, it was brilliant. Hedden mm. Street was brilliant. If you, if you knew about Hedden Street, but I, I, 
uh, quite a few people used to go up there, but I only knew um, people that everyone else didn't want to know yeah well i mean i think that the girls over here had that similar experience on the west coast when they were out there doing the tv show and then the girls who knew about the house in new jersey and i guess that was in the 80s oh yeah so oh. they they well, had let's, let's, let's went to la and he had a house in 1979 with scoby when he was out there and then he came out for a holiday with my mates and we was going to go and see him but he'd left it, I can't remember where that was. That was in LA somewhere. Mm. And um, and I knew um, I knew a bloke called Vinny Savanti that was in New York. Um, he, t he took photos. He had, br he had brilliant photos. He was like a journalist reporter from New York. Yeah. And I, and I want you to come to New York. He went to me. You can't come to New York. He goes. You can't come in any of the hotels. I said why? He goes. Because you'll give us everything away. <laughs> 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 I just, everything is, is at my hair, everything is exactly the same. Because you can't, we're bankers, you coming out here because we'll, ne we'll never have to go anywhere. Yeah, yeah you definitely weren't undercover, were you, Diane? Well, I wasn't conspicuous. No, I bloody wasn't. No, I wasn't. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> everything, everything, that, everything that he had, I'd have the same. My clothes, everything, exactly the same. I don't wear it now. Hmm. No. No, we do draw the line at the top of trousers. Oh, when, another thing, when we went to Heaven Street, we used to go to Heaven Street every day, and when the Romulans went on, the Ottomans was over doing a tour. It's when, when Donnie's son is 40, the oldest one, so he'd only had that. Boy, the boy was only a baby, so it was like about 40 years ago. We'd been up Heaven Street, and, and the Osmonds was playing around the corner, so we used to always go down up the backstage door and go and watch the Osmonds every night. Oh, wow. Night. Oh, that's really fun. So were they, when you say you watched them, were they doing a TV show every every night? or? No, I was doing comedy, I was playing, I was doing gigs, I was doing gigs. Oh, wow. <laughs> So we just used to do about ten of us used to walk in and just sit down and watch it for a laughing. How did you do that? We just used to show up in the back of the stage <laughs> door and walk in. I don't know why I ask. I, I, I should know the answer. You just did. Okay. It was a stupid question. It was a stupid question. It was a stupid question. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, wow. So the best, of, yeah, the best of both worlds there, the Osmonds and the Rollers. Well, I'm not an Osmond fan, but I've met him a couple of times, Donnie, and the others. I've, I've had some sweets off of Meryl's kids, and, and I'm not... That, that was just because there was nothing else happening that day, I reckon. Yeah. There we go. And it was free. <laughs> and it was free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. That's awesome. Anyway, let, let, let me tell you about the not knowing is not trying to remember some more things. All right, just, just feel free to interject. We're going to bring Jan Hi. on. Hey, Jan. Hi, right, it's so, so Hello, my lovely. Hey, Jan. I'm still awake. I'm still awake. I'm like Diane. My mother thought that London was a den of iniquity and I wasn't allowed anywhere oh. near it. Oh, yeah. Really yeah, she was right. We didn't want you, Laura. I went to Supersonic in 1972. Oh, yeah, I was there. Yeah, well, I wasn't. I had a ticket. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> and my mother barred me from going. And, and so, I mean, I only lived 36 miles north of London, but it, when you're 14, it's a long way. That's a world away. Yes. Definitely. But I always had it in my head that I was going to meet the Rollers. There was never any doubt. And it was, uh, you know, I've got children, I still had it in my head. And it was 1990, and I'd got Record Collector magazine. And there was a guy, Adrian Seeger, selling the eight CD box set. Do you remember that Japanese box set? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, I need that box set. I haven't got a CD player. I have to point this one out. I thought, if I get the box set, I'll just sit in the car and put them in the CD player. That's fine, right? I don't need one. So, 
they were pretty, he wrote back to me, this is in the days of letters, and he said, um, they're playing in Wakefield on July the 17th, which is probably, what, 200 miles? Oh, this, wow. is, this is Eric's rollers. Yeah. At the time, I didn't know what rollers they were, I just knew the rollers. So I'm like, I was running my little sister up, and I goes, fancy coming to Wakefield for the night. There's 200 miles away. She went, here we go and see us, the basic road. She goes, yeah, okay. Got my husband's car. Then it was broke up to Wakefield, um, and that was it, completely hooked all over again. Mm. I just remember standing there thinking, oh my God. I'm in the same room as Space City Roller after all these years. Oh, wow. And I um, met Diane Bramford, Adrian. And then a week later, Adrian rings me and he says, John, I'm playing in Norfolk, which was quite near me. He says, I'm going to give you my friend's number. It was Kim, Kimmy. Um, ring her up, arrange to meet her there. Three hours later on the phone, as it goes. <laughs> um, and that's where we, it all started. We made sure we got into the sound check, we met the band, and we had this plan. We are not going to wear tartan. We are not going to be nice to them. We are not going to be like all the other fans. You're going to, so you're going to do the, uh, you're, to that, that was a way to a man's heart. Yeah, aloofness. <laughs> okay, okay. So, I mean, you, we used to go to gigs, Cass would ring us, the boys are playing here, or we'd get a thing from the fan club with just a town. Oh, wow. <laughs> no venue, just a town. <laughs> there's, there's no internet, there's no mobile phones, they're just, there's just us in a car and a town. Wow. Yeah, wow. Well, so, so we used to, um, Paul had done the lights, he used to um, use sensible van hire from Paddyham, so we just looked for the van. Yeah, good thinking. Oh, we, okay. we always had to be really. Yeah, we always had to be good detectives. We did. Well, yeah. Sometimes you used to drop into your lap. You'd be like, "Oh, where on earth are we going to go?" And you turn the corner and, and the Alan Woods. Th that that is yeah. very true. It was meant to be. Okay, well, I drive down Kensington High Street, thinking, "Where are they?" I was straight from Woodham. Where are they? Go. Yeah, kismet. Oh, the, we always found them. Um, and then every cast just to help out with the merchandise, which we did. And I mean, eventually he'd say to us, have you found any decent hotels, girls? Oh, all right, there. Or, or he'd say, how many hotel rooms do we need tonight? And Kim and I always ended up with the best hotel room. Hmm. Wow. I remember there was one time and we got these huge hotel rooms, sofa, table and chairs and everything. A woods had the end of a corridor that was like the toilet. Oh. <laughs> and he's walked and he goes, how did you two get this big room? So, well, we're a bit special. He goes, come and look at my room. And it literally was someone had just put a door on the end of a corridor. And there was oh, a single no. And there was a chest of drawers in there. Well, they were being... the mighty have fallen. They were being gentlemen. <laughs> well, they were great fun because Eric didn't drink at the time. Him and Cass used to take themselves off after their gig and then Woods would go where are we going girls so we were like the gang of four <laughs> so it's you Woody Kimmy and Alan and there was the four of us and we, we just I mean it was all perfectly innocent we just put the world to rights sure um, we were in a hotel once in Newcastle it was Swallow Hotel and I remember this because Eric came out and he was really chuffed because he got a really good deal for us I think it was £10 a room yeah, that'd be about and it. he goes, I just got us a major squeak. And we're in this four star hotel, and the bar's on the 24th floor, or something like that. And in the middle of this bar is a grand piano. Oh. So the four of us up there, we've got a bottle of whiskey and a bottle of vodka and some coke between us. Because why would you buy at the bar when you can just sneak a bottle in? Amen, right. Um, and so there's a few words on this grand piano banging out a couple of tunes and that and we've heard the ding of the night porter in the lift so we've got back to our seats go on Alan it's your turn and there he is just got his hands on his grand piano and the night porter comes in what are you doing on there get off no <laughs> oh. we, just, we were always getting Alan in trouble well he, he, he was very charming he could probably get out of it easier no, he was just like, he never see it coming. <laughs> I like, everyone see. else had heard the ding, no, not Alan. 
Oh, wow. And it was just like, they wanted him to get his hands on a grand piano. Oh. There was one point we were in Preston having a drink, and he decided at half past four in the morning to sing Manana in the middle of a bar. <laughs> Did he have a couple before, do you think? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, and they normally revolve around Alan because he was just so funny. Oh, he was um, so much fun. And we were in a place near Blackpool, and there was a Christmas party going on. We, we'd actually got the annex next to the hotel, me and Kim, it was like a little flat. There was a Christmas party going on, and there, there's all these people in their finery and their Christmas dresses dancing to the birthday song, and Alan just stands there quite matter of fact, and says, I really wish I'd written that song. Which song was it? I just the birdie song. I don't know that song. You know, oh, oh. Don't we call that something else here, Laura? The chicken dance. The chicken dance. The chicken dance. Yeah, that's it. And Woods is just like, really? And he goes, well, yeah, because I play it every Christmas. <laughs> then they play it here at every wedding. Yes, it's huge wedding. Why yeah. would you do that? Yeah, yeah, there's a, it's there's yeah there's a there's a whole dance to it. Do you do the dance over there? Well, they were doing the dance. So Alan was fascinated. I was waiting for him to go and join in. Yeah. <laughs> I usually go to the bathroom then when they play that song. I'm I'm not I'm not into it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ex exactly. <laughs> but as said, they, they were just normal down to earth they're just, they're just ordinary people they're, they're just ordinary people jan when did you when did you and diane connect that not diane branford um the girl sitting next oh, to you God, that must have been when eric came back on the scene yeah. in the 2000s and it, it was eric that introduced us is that right Oh, wow. Oh. So I think South End or something like that. That sounds oh, perfect, oh, actually. Was it the museum? It was my museum there. Oh, yeah, you're right. So, was I, or was it that acoustic festival? Oh, I can't remember. It, it was one of them. Oh, my God. I better get, you know, these but we, we kind of got introduced. But the first time we went to Hoi Kia, then you both live in Spain now. And I'm like, yeah, we're about 15 miles apart. He goes, God help Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, th I think uh, he's probably very jealous and he wants to live there too now to, to be closer to you. Well, when, before he was ill, before he was ill, he, uh, you know, he, he used to do those um, house parties. Yeah, sure. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. He said to me, he was going to come out here and stay with me, or not with me, because I've got two houses, I would have let him stay in my house, and um, he was going to do a house party for me in my garden, but oh well, yeah. Yeah, now he's got me well, he, he can't come, but he said he would, mm. so he better know for the future, he might. Well, where we used to play, the lounge bar's only what? In fact, the lounge bar where he used to play in Spain is probably halfway between me and Diane. Yeah, not far. Mm. That'll be the halfway point between us. Wow. I, I think that we'd have a. Um, we might come over for that. <laughs> what do you think, Laura? Yeah, if, if he, if he, if oh, yeah. And then he, he, he said he would do it. Because I looked after the cat, he said he would do it for me. But if he does, then it'll be. Point will be relocated. Yes. Oh wow! Yeah. Wouldn't I'm that be? A, wow! Wouldn't that be incredible? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh boy. I mean, when, when, when we've been quite fortunate when we've come to Hoy because we've always seemed to meet him in the car park. Yeah. Before we come into the place. so when he walks in and he cuddles everybody else, I can sure we don't get that. We don't get that um, immediate reaction. Yeah. Well that that's true love. If you get the finger, it's true love. Yes. It uh, really is. It uh, really is. I have to say, I mean, when I probably spent seven, eight years with them in the nineties and they were just such good fun. Yeah. They are. Um, but it it was always like there was me, Kimmy and Cats against the rest of the world. Mm. 
Well, that's some yeah, that, that's a mighty force there. That is a mighty force. Yes, we did do a bit of ganging up on them, but I mean, it was just great fun. There was, you know, and some of the fans we met back then, I see now on Facebook and in real life, and little Yoko, I love her. Mm. And I, mean, I never forget her following them. They, she followed on to her, and I think it was 1991, and she hasn't changed a bit. Yeah. I said, Yoko, you still look 14 now. It, isn't that her. something? It is. Well, you you did the um the UK 2K Fest too, and you brought Eric and yes. Alan. How, how did that happen? Done, well, we we done the one with Les in 2000. Was that UK? To just UK. UK 2K right. original. Correct. Sorry. Gail and I done Liverpool. Right. And then on to 2007, and Eric had just started doing acoustic gigs. And I kind of just plumped the idea in his lap. And he says, what would you want me to do? And I says, oh, just, you can sing Mary Has a Little Lamb or Barbara Bar Black Sheep. Just stand there. I don't care what you do. Because we wouldn't. Well, okay, let me think about it. So when a cat had chucked a few emails my way, and we'd been swapping emails, and then Eric said, to him, I'm in Bristol. Come down with Patsy. Come and meet me. And he goes, I've had a thought. I went, okay. I think I'll do a request set. And I've got my head in my hands going, do you know what this involves? And he yeah. says, what do you mean? And I went, you are going to have to sing every album track and B-side there ever was. Exactly. You can't remember. You don't yeah. even know the words to Bye Bye Baby. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did I have to sing? What song did I have to sing? At one of the gigs he cried. Was it Love Me Like I Love You? At one of the gigs he cried, um, we, we went to, he gave me the mic to sing it because he couldn't remember the words, wasn't it? I think that was something I can't remember what song it was. But Les is the same. Yeah. You have to, you have to mouth the words for Les, because he can't remember either. <laughs> that, that was the after we were sitting and drinking tea in this cafe, and he started singing Bye Bye Barbara. Barbara was a good girl. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, and, I mean, Suze, you were there. Yeah. He was amazing. He done what four hours on stage. Oh, easily. We we were expecting maybe twenty thirty minute get you know set you know. It was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. I just gave him, I just said, look, I'm paying you for this. Do what you want. And, yeah. and he was a bit. Well, I know Eric, and Eric will always give two hundred percent. Yeah. Especially musically. Oh yeah. So I, I kind of knew if I give him this, he'll just run with it. Um, but even I didn't expect that. I was standing there afterwards thinking, oh, my God. Yeah. No, it was absolutely... Oh, my God. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. And I had him and Alan up singing Don't Let the Music Die. Oh, yeah. It was beautiful. And they got me up. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. I, I mean, it was, a, it was amazing for everyone. And Lisa got to sing with... Um, um, Laura got to sing Eagles Fly. Yeah. Probably said about that the better because she had to sing the right version. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Eric just excelled. I think everyone's expectations, and I remember one of the fans. I'm not going to name her, but she was really unsure about. She was a big Les fan. She's like, I'm only coming because I want to see everyone here. That's fine, you know. I don't expect her to see Eric. And she just went, it's just blown me away. He's just totally blown me away yeah. by what he's put into this. A lot of people left feeling a lot differently about him as a musician. I mean, we always knew he was, you know, the, yeah. the brain of the band, if you will, the writer, okay. you know. But, he's yeah, he's he he really is the real deal. Yeah, but, and I mean, up until then, we'd have conventions, and every one of them was good. I was at a lot of them. I was at Toronto, I was London, Edinburgh, and they were all good. Yeah. But until that one, I mean, considering none of it was, once, well, once I got Eric on that stage, right, that was the end of my planning. Right. I had nothing more up to that. that. That was my plan, done and dusted. It's over to you, Eric, you deal with it. Um, and I just thought, you've given more in this one than anyone else has ever given they might do an hour set an hour and a half set you've just given us four hours of the most obscure bay city roller school yeah ever exactly wow. and and not only that after it was over i mean i don't think he finished with a meet and greet until like three in the morning because i remember we were towards the back of the line 
and I, I remember thinking, oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> but so I can't imagine how he was. He had to have been just spent, you know. It, he, but you know, he insisted on meeting everyone. And I remember being backstage, um, and Eric was always the first one out to meet the fans. Mm. No, they, they turned up to see me. I want to go and see them. He was always one of the first out. Yeah. Um, he always had, because he always said, they put me where I am today. They've come to see me. You know, yeah. I need to go and say thank you. And he rang me up the week after you came to Edinburgh in 2007 to thank me and to say thank you to everyone else for coming along. And what was quite funny is, I don't know if you remember, I took Lenny with me, who oh, was yeah. quite famous in his own way. Yeah, for so, sure. And he's gone to me. Look <laughs> at Lenny. I'm like, yes, sir. And he goes, was he married to Susie Quattro? And I went, uh, yes. Did you not recognise him? He said, he's got grey hair. Yeah, I remember when I first walked into the hotel bar, Lenny was sitting there, and I said to Regina, I said, oh my God, Eric's here, because I just saw the gray hair, and Regina's like, I don't think, she's like, I don't think that's Eric, I'm like, I think it might be, so, you know, there we are, <laughs> it was not Eric, it was Lenny. <laughs> the other nice thing about that weekend was... Um, because knowing Alan that well, I knew Alan would just like go to the bar and hold court. And he certainly did. And I remember Eric coming in and he says, Is Big Al here? I said, Yeah, he's downstairs. He said, Don't tell me. Holding court in the bar. I says, How did you get? Yeah. Yep. He <laughs> and he says, I bet he's having a whale of time. I says, Oh, he's just sitting there telling his stories. Oh, as he does. The best, the best stories. Of his ability. Yeah. That was a great, that was a um, great and it was weekend. It so lovely to have Alan just holding court. And he was on the stage with Eric a bit, and they were bantering, and it was just so lovely to see. And his Q and A, I mean, his Q and A was wonderful too. Well, Alan's in yeah. his area. Oh yeah. And I, I loved how he was so nervous at the beginning, and we're like, it's just us, <laughs> you know. And yeah, but once you once you get Alan talking, yeah, 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 you got to like, get him going. You just let him roll. He was, just he was one of the funniest people I ever met. So funny. People. Yep, so we, funny. We used to get him to do the burning rubber dance. Uh-oh. You'd get a couple of things down and say, Alan, what? The burning rubber. He goes, ah, oh, do I have to? Yes. <laughs> but he'd do it on stage as well. If you caught his eye on stage, you'd go into the bur cross his eyes and start the burning rubber dance. Oh, my God. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that we was a great... When he lived up in Glen Devon, it was his birthday, and we went up to surprise him for a week. Well, we, we'd gone on holiday for a week, Kim and I. We thought, oh, we'll just go and surprise Alan on his birthday. And he just organised the whole week for us. Did he? Yeah, he was like, right, tomorrow we're doing this. I'm taking you out for dinner that night. And he says, it's a Highland Games, you can't miss that. And he, he had the whole week organised for us. Oh, how lovely. Uh, and then he, he told us to go down and see Derek, and Kim and I were a bit, I'm not like Diane, I don't knock on people's doors. Kim and I sat in the car outside Derek's for half an hour, and we got a bit too nervous and didn't knock on the door. Oh! oh. <laughs> he, Derek he would, said to me years later, I don't know why you didn't knock on that door. He, he would have loved it. Uh, I said, we were just so nervous, he went, but you know all the others, and I think that's because we knew Alan and Eric from once. Yeah. Um, but we didn't know Derek, and it was kind of like invading his privacy. Mm -hmm. I, again, with the boundaries, I love that, that you, you respect that. I mean, Woody's mum and dad, Woody's mum always said to us, if we were up there, we had to come around for tea. And then if we were 15 minutes late, oh, the row we'd get. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, I've had many a row off Woody's mum, yeah. late. Everyone who talks to, everyone who talks about his parents said they were just the loveliest people to the fans. And I remember I have a photo of Mrs. Wood from I, I from a pen pal. I still have it. She's holding a birthday cake that I guess one of the fans, you know, presented to her for his birthday. And she's just the loveliest, sweetest woman. <laughs> Oh, they were lovely. They were always, always really well clean. If you're up there, pop in and say. But I have to say, Tam was. Tam used to say to us, just pop in for a cup of tea. And I said, we never come back out again. I just go, don't drink anything. Now, wait a minute. So you, you mean... Don't drink anything, don't take it. We'll do never you, come back out again. Do you mean at the compound, Jan? Yeah, up at Little Keniston. I, I call it don't the compound. So you've been inside. 
Well now, dear, dear friends and listeners, we really hate doing this to you, but you're going to have to join us next week for our final session with Jan and Diane to hear what went down in the compound or little Kellerstein. Until next week, thanks for listening and keep on rolling. <laughs>